In 30 seconds, you will be witness to one of the greatest online events in the history of, well, online events. Descript proudly brings to you a topic that you deeply care about and whose name is the title of this online event. I'm Don. I am not your host. I am an overdub stock voice included for free with Descript. So now let's meet someone who actually works here. Hello, everyone. I am Jay LaBeouf. I am that person that actually works here. Uh, you've seen a lot of me lately as I've been hosting a lot, but in my commitment to not overdo it, uh, I want to bring in amazing guests who know more about topics that I don't know anything about. Uh, so I brought in Alban Brook, who is head of marketing for Buzzsprout. Alban? <laughs> hey, thanks for having me. I love the intro. That was awesome. <laughs> awesome. Is, is that your first time sitting through it? Yeah, that was the first time I saw it. That was great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, before um, before we dive in, uh, let me kind of talk a little bit about what we're going to cover today and uh, let our audience know how they can get involved. So the focus of today is it's all about transcripts. We're going to be talking about transcripts, accessibility, search, and sharing. Um, to start off with the comments, um, you can interact with this stream live. That's why we do it live. We want to hear from you. Um, tell me about transcripts. I want you to put in the comments window, what are transcripts for? Why are they important? Why should you create a transcript? Um, so start putting that in the comments. Uh, if you're using YouTube, then just enter YouTube comment. We'll start seeing them fly in. And then we're going to review those, your responses in a second. So in Descript, um, transcripts are kind of the way that we work. Uh, we describe Descript as a Google Docs for audio and video. The overall paradigm is it allows you to edit audio and video as simply as just editing the text. And when you're working in the text, you can do things like easily see what needs to be cut, make edits, make polish, uh, search, find, replace. And as you're going, you're actually building up the transcript. And we're going to go through some of the reasons why you do want to do that, but also um, how you can go about creating you know, really rich things derived from the transcript. Um, so we're gonna talk a little bit about accessibility, how can you, you can use your transcripts to ensure that your content is accessible to the deaf and hard of hearing communities, plus audiences that prefer to learn via transcript. Um, we can talk about search and uh, some of the SEO benefits you have from transcripts, and then we'll talk about sharing, how you can actually Use your transcript to share out in multiple different forms, uh, not just some highlights, but also you know bigger uh, bigger sections of the show. So with that, um, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Jay LaBeouf. I'm head of business development at Descript, and my guest, as I introduced before, is Alban Brook, head of marketing at Buzzsprout. Alban, thanks for joining me. Yeah, Jay, thanks you so much for having me. Uh, so tell us a, li a little bit about uh, about Buzzsprout for those who are not familiar with it. Sure. Um, Buzzsprout is one of the largest podcast hosts in the world, and we just help people get their podcast online and out into the directories. Um, we do a handful of other things, but that's like our core focus. And so pretty much if you work with Descript, you edit all of your episodes. Um, once you finish in Descript, then everything gets passed over to Buzzsprout. And then we help you that get out to all of your listeners. Um, so, you know, we, that's why I think we ended up, it was kind of a logical fit for us to work together last year. And, um, you know, I personally used Descript. So yeah, I think that's a, it's a good connection. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. And I, uh, in my, not only in my Descript life, do we have an integration that we'll show off later um, for publishing from Descript to Buzzsprout, but also um, I am, a producer of a podcast, the Drop the Mic Music Industry Conversations podcast. Uh, hey. 50 Stanford students do all their editing with Descript, and then we export to Buzzsprout and do all the hosting. So um, nice. it's uh, it's been a great experience for all of us. We're talking about transcripts. Um, let me pop on some, some of the answers of why we think transcripts are important. Stu, thanks for joining us. Uh, being able to offer my clients a transcript alongside podcast edit mix, it's been invaluable. So for client purposes, 
Um, like Pleasure that. Central Radio. Uh, transcripts are great for loyal listeners who want to read as well as listen. And SEO. For sure. Uh, Lena, accessibility, SEO, and convenience. Uh, indie author, Maddie actually offers up, you know, cleaning up the transcript is one of the more time consuming things. Hoping for some best practices to speed it up. I think I can help with that. Uh, wonderful. Yeah, okay. a lot of good and, answers there. Yeah, um, absolutely. And we kind of did touch on, you know, all the different reasons why you would want to do the transcript. I love the one about working with a client. Um, I know quite often we just, I've experienced this working on bus route, just in support people ask questions and to go and find a particular part of a podcast is still difficult. Just like listening through and trying to find the part they're talking about. Yep. And if there is a transcript, man, it gets so much easier where you can just scroll through and skim text much more quickly than you can skim audio. So I actually have not thought of that one before, but that is totally true. That is a real use case. Absolutely. Um, yeah, the, the, the indie author notes, um, with most, much, with fewer people commuting, um, many of, uh, her listeners are actually reading the transcript now. I think that's a great, that's a great point. Awesome. So, um, did, did that, did that nail all of them? Is, is that really, you know, the, the, the core and, you know, also we, we touched upon accessibility a little bit. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean it all stems from accessibility and that is more than just um, maybe what pops in your mind initially um, people who are deaf or hard of hearing, obviously for them to be able to engage with podcasts, they need to have transcripts. And I think that people quite often underestimate the number of people that are hard of hearing. Um, it's much more common in the people than you really imagine. And just being able to have a transcript, while you're listening to a podcast is really valuable. Um, another group that really benefits from this is anyone, if you've ever had to learn a second language, to be able to listen to something while reading it is really valuable. So for anyone that English isn't their first language, having that transcript is really awesome. Um, especially when maybe the audio quality is not perfect, you want to be able to hear exactly what's in there. Um, so we kind of had just been hearing from people on Buzzsprout for a long time. That was very important to them. And so that's kind of the core of why um, transcripts are important. Then you have this group that it's just maybe a convenience factor. And that's where I fall in. That's if you have a transcript online and I listen to the podcast while I'm out for a run or I'm driving my car, well, then I can go back and go, man, that one part was really good. And I can just scroll through, find the segment, and maybe save it as a note. Um, so I listen to a podcast called Conversations with Tyler, and I often find myself going back and finding their transcripts because they actually have a perfect human-edited transcript for every episode. Um, awesome. Then we just have sharing ability. So if you want to be able to share uh, transcripts, that's super valuable to have one that's there. You can share parts of the podcast. And then finally... This is the one that's maybe sometimes a little oversold is SEO. It is really valuable to have a transcript online. Um, though somebody who's worked in SEO now for quite a while, you're not going to rank your podcast transcript for very competitive keywords. So think like credit cards or something. But what you are going to be able to do is if someone remembers, you know, I listened to that really good podcast and it was with Jay from Descript. And he talked about this thing. If they search that, then your podcast will pop up where if you didn't have a transcript, it's unlikely that they'd be able to find it again. So it's more long tail. It's not these high level keywords. But so all those kind of combined tell me this is some low hanging fruit for podcasters. It's a great way to um, get your podcast out to the world. This is great. I think. In uh, only a, a few minutes, we've built the case, um, and you basically can't not start with a 95% accurate transcript by working with Descript. So we all need to do it. Um, uh, 
Griff agrees, uh, creating transcripts of audio and video to excerpt for posts for their uh, blog, Facebook page, and discussing forums. Um, really, really great insight. Uh, Kristen, easier to repurpose that grab and go content for social media. Absolutely. And, um, and, and then Nancy, again, reaffirming, working with the, the deaf blind community, this is the only way using a refreshable braille display and screen reading software. So, so let's get into it. Um, Albany, uh, Alban, Albany, as I read text and then mispronounce your name, Alban, why don't you share your screen? Um, I'll help you drive and navigate uh, just for people, people viewing. Uh, are you a Descript? Do you consider yourself a Descript expert? I am a Descript user, not a expert by any means. So All right. I will... Um... Hopefully we'll struggle along with everybody on the live stream. And I, luckily I have you to show me uh, where I'm clicking the wrong thing. Awesome. Awesome. So um, what we're looking at, well, actually, what are we looking at? Sure. So one of the podcasts we produce on Buzzsprout is called Buzzcast. And it's just us talking about the podcasting industry. So um, this is an episode we just brought into Descript. And this is the Descript um, 95% accurate transcript. So we brought it in and you can see there's some things that are not perfect. We're not talking about voice booze anywhere, but <laughs> so we'll be going through and kind of cleaning this up together and kind of showing, um, how you can do this while you're editing. And I think this is actually kind of like the critical point for why we headed up on this live stream together. Every other editing software is built around the framework of the sound wave. And that's kind of something we inherited from the music industry where it's not, it's not, it's a, how a guitar sounds. It's not words. And then Descript has a totally different way that I think is still unique in all editing software. And so what you get is when you're doing your edit, you are naturally improving your transcript and you're getting your transcript. You're taking from 95% accurate to a hundred percent. And what's, it's just so powerful to get that done while you're doing your edit so that later on you're not going, Oh man, now I have to go spend another hour cleaning up the transcript. No, it's already done during the editing process. And so that's why I think, um, that's why I was excited when you invited me to do this live stream, uh, to do it with everybody. Fantastic. So l let me already show you one thing that, uh, I'm, it's relatively new. It's maybe only, only a few weeks old. Um, you ever, you ever notice that your name doesn't get transcribed correctly or your guests names don't get transcribed yeah, I correctly? I was actually about to call you out on that. Cause I have transcribed my name in tons of things and I'm always Alvin. So did you edit this? Uh, we're going to fix that once and well, all right. So we're going to do something once and for all. First of all, um, you see the name of the uh, the name of the project in the top right, transcripts, accessibility, search, and sharing. You see that uh, nice. reveal triangle to the right of the name? Click that. We have added in a transcription glossary. So click that. Okay. And what that's going to do, this is a uh, a glossary of terms that you can all add to. And so this is where you would add in your first name and last name. You add in guest names. You add in the name of your podcast. Basically, anything that will be used repeatedly across your Descript drive, you can add it in here and any future time you do transcription. So for, for this one, we'll probably get it wrong because we've already transcribed it. But in the future, this is your glossary. And this is, uh, you know, a lot of people have been asking for best practices in here for what you can do. Um, we have a... Uh, we have a, a lot of shared drives at Descript and we have them full of, uh, of keywords. Um, All right, so uh, same okay thing from start adding a few of these in here. You can add them in and the next time, so they won't be reflected here, but the next time we transcribe something. Okay. So well, nice. That'll be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I definitely find myself falling into these. We talk about DAW, you know, we talk, so I'll, I'll maybe do that when I'm not on a live stream. Awesome. Cool. And All right. awesome. And so you saw the little message there saying like, so we weren't, you weren't a member of the Descript drive. So when we have this, when you have a project that you own, you can have that. 
All right. All right. So, um, so what you did is you, you know, uh, we dragged in the audio file and then basically we just hit transcribe for automatic transcription. And then we pressed the detect speakers button, um, which basically is how we have speaker labels. Uh, so the, there were three speakers in here. Um, Chris gave them a name and that's how we have names for all of them. Gotcha. So can I go in and start uh, showing everybody how to make some updates? Let's do it. All right. So let's listen to this part. If you're an avid podcast listener and you listen to everything at, you know, 1.5 to 1.7 X, getting into Clubhouse feels like the slowest thing ever. <laughs> All right. So I'm an English major, so I have to do this. I have to add that. We got to take this Clubhouse and make that. Is there a way for me just to. So you're going to want to go to. What am I struggling with here? All right. So there's okay. the two key modes um, in the uh, upper left. You see it says edit media. Um, you can toggle between edit media and correct text mode. So for the purpose of this, um, basically when you're trying, when you're taking your podcast and going up to hundred percent accurate, you're going to want to go through and correct text mode. So now any changes you make will be only on the text. Perfect. All right. And then. I'm going to change this guy too. All right. So we didn't actually edit the audio when we did that. All we did was I cleaned it up a little bit. Exactly. So All right. So I'll go back and I'm going to stay in correct text because um, this actually is the final edited version of this podcast that I imported. Cool. With silent <laughs> skipping turned on and voice boost. Yeah. I was All right. So. What Travis said there was with silent skipping. Oh. There you go. So for anyone who's wondering what these are, uh, silent skipping and voice boost are two really awesome features in my favorite podcast app, uh, overcast. And so that is my experience for listening to podcasts is it's always got this, these two nice features turned on. All right. So this part is trying to think that this is tr Kevin. So. Totally. So, um, you can, uh, so if you click back onto the text, okay. You, you notice if you hover next to Kevin over the label, uh, you, you can just click on the X button on the left and then now it's just Travis again. And then you can just, oh, nice. Hit delete, merge it together. Um, the other thing you can do with speaker labels is when you hover over a speaker label, there's a little uh, grab area on the right of it where you can grab and just reassign the speaker label to somewhere else. Ah, nice. Okay, so I could have just clicked in here. Yep, you can do that. Um, nice and easy. All right, so well, let's listen to this again. Make sure we've got it perfect. With, <laughs> with silent skipping turned on and voice boost. Yeah, I was listening Kevin, do you actually like listen at 1.5? All right, so I, I dropped in, I said Kevin here. I have to add all the inflections here. We, especially the question mark, uh, excited question. <laughs> so here we go. Listen Kevin, do you actually like, listen at 1.5? 1.5 is the minimum I listen at. Really? I usually listen like 1.75. I'm a 1.3 smart speed guy. I'm a locked in one to one ratio. Oh my gosh, I can't do that. How, how do you? All right. So that after we cleaned up that first little bit where we were talking about, I mean, these are like trademark terms, I think. So yeah. I'm not surprised that those weren't picked up. But after that, this is all really accurate. Yeah. And uh, by the way, as a, I should ask, uh, Alban, as a one to one ratio guy, would you like me to speak slower. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're, you speak at one-to-one -one ratio, so I'm okay with that. <laughs> I just don't understand. So sometimes people tell me, they're like, oh, I listen to the, everything at 2X. Yeah. I'm like, at 2X, I'm trying to listen to stuff that I'm like, I want to retain this. I can't retain things. I can't retain times. it either at 2X. No, no. Um, Luckily, this is a live stream, so nobody's watching this at 2X. No, no, but the replay. Uh, look forward to seeing how many of you press the, the button on YouTube. Um, let's see. 
Uh, Maddie says, if, uh, I find if, if you have to make a change once, you know, uh, such as Clubhouse, uh, pays to do a search and replace to catch any other occurrences. Ooh, That's a great good. example. So can we, can we do that right now? Show everybody how to do that? Yeah, let's, let's do that. Do you have anything else that uh, uh, you think is uh, a kind of a repeated mistake? In this episode, any proper names, jargon? I don't see any right now. Uh, Rabbi Matt Shayweiss, I, I could probably try to go find how to spell his name correctly. I definitely yeah. don't know that off the top of my head. All, all um, good, all good. Um, for fun. So I yeah, click on the house should be in here. So yeah, is this, am I in the right area? You got it. All right. Nice. All right. Okay, so this is a good tip. So yeah, we see everywhere here. We were talking about clubhouse, the new social media listening app and how it compares to podcasting. And so now I'm going to replace all of those with just a capital C since it's a proper noun. How can nice. I do that quickly? Uh, is that this here? Oh, yep. You're in the right place. Then apply all. All right. Nice. Great. Great. Who is that tip from? We uh, they need they need some props. Yeah, uh, that is Maddie, the indie author. So that's a great example. Yeah, awesome. So great. So now that's gonna that's gonna update it. Um, across uh, everything you're working on. Perfect. And so that's a, it is a good tip, especially as, as you're going through an episode, if you didn't already have it in your transcription glossary, again, the, the glossary is helpful for like adding it in for future use. Um, but in this first time, you know, it's, it's going to catch everything uh, from here on. And then I could, so if I wanted to do this forever, I could go back down here, transcription yep. glossary, and then add it there. Exactly. So I know. This isn't my project, so it won't let me. But no worries. In my own projects, I would do that. Nice. Awesome. And so what What else is cool in here is, um, and, and also just pointing out, you know, you see next to the share button in the top right, you see the initials JL with a little uh, pink next to it. I'm actually in this project as well. So transcript editing can actually be a team sport. Um, you can invite you know somebody else in who maybe knows the terminology a little better, or you know another collaborator, and we could go in and both update the transcript together in real time. Nice, and then we can actually have like running comments here. Um, we do this a lot. So at Buzzsprout, we just wrapped up this huge video project, and this kind of commenting is so valuable when you want to share a near finished product with people and say what edits would you want me to make here? Um, you often, like I experienced this, if you're the one doing all the editing for a long time, you eventually, it's hard for you to see things with fresh eyes. And so you at, want other people to get their input, yep. but you also want to make sure that their input is tagged to the location you're going to make a change. You know, if they just said, oh, I, you know, the part where you're talking about Clubhouse felt a little slow. Well, if I went through this podcast, we probably talked about it four or five different times it would be much better if somebody could tag a section and drop a comment. So that's a super useful feature. All right. So, um, so really, you know, a lot of people ask for transcript correction, um, kind of speed tips, power tips. Um, I mean, the find and replace is certainly one thing, um, being in correct text mode and learning the keyboard shortcut which if you're on a Mac is command E. If you're on Windows, it's control E to switch back and forth between correct text mode and edit media mode. Okay. Um, so now you have you know, all your fingers uh, ready to go to switch back and forth. Um, then you're playing back the content. Then also uh, we support uh, faster than real, speaking of one-to-one, -one, um, you see there's a little speed control uh, next to the play button up at, up in the top. Um, so you can not only adjust this um, to go through. So usually if I'm doing transcript correction or if I'm reviewing material, that's when I might kind of read and listen to it at like one and a half times. And so that way when you're playing in Descript, it's gonna play back faster. You'll see the transcript move faster. 
Um, you can kind of correct things that way. There's keyboard shortcuts for adjusting the playback speed as well. So that way you could you know, slow it down when you're making fixes and speed it back up to skip over. Um, yeah, yeah, that's super useful. So I could just be... Well, it's, you're looking at me like I'm the crazy person. <laughs> so you could... Yeah, so that, that's really useful. If I'm doing text correction, I just want to go, okay, this doesn't read correctly. All right. And yep. So now I could go in and make sure that that was correct. Well, again. It's, you're looking at me like I'm the crazy person. <laughs> you can totally do it. All right. Nice. So nice. that would be a quick way to go back and just kind of give myself a proofread without listening to it for so long. Exactly. The entire 45 minute podcast. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, another, another thing I do is um, I. I'm pretty lazy, so I actually won't correct the transcript until I have my final edit. So in this case, this is your final edit for the show. So it's worth it to go back and fix, let's say, you know, New York City and capitalize the C on city and add in, you know, punctuation and make sure your line breaks all look good. Um, it's worth doing that once it's your final episode, but um, I, I throw out a lot of material as well, so I don't usually fix everything. Yeah, I think that makes sense that I, you need the high level edit to make the actual edits. But if I'm correcting things like names, I could just wait until I know that it's actually in the final. I can't tell you that um, I know that This American Life, one of the, like the greatest podcasts of all time, they actually transcribed all of their interviews before they even um, create the episode because they do so much in editing Yeah, that they want the ability to basically do what we're doing here, which is say like, oh, this section's good, but it would have been better if it was down here. And then they're, um, you know, they're actually just dragging and dropping and moving sections. Right. So, you know, you, it may not be super important. Like I may not, if this section may not be here, I may not go get the correct spelling of Shane Weiss until after I know this is going to be in there for sure. And then I would make sure I go get that spelling corrected. Absolutely. And um, if anybody's here seeing Descript for the first time, um, just for fun, Alvin, grab that sentence, uh, select it, hit cut. All right. Hit cut and, and then paste it a few lines below. Oh, okay. just for fun. All right. So I'll just grab that. It's there you out, go. And then I'll put it down here. Yep. Awesome. So what we just did was actually, we didn't just move the text. We moved the audio too, right? Right. Right. So That's... This will sound disjointed, but do we want to listen to it? Yeah, let's listen to it. Let's, let's see what just happened there. Yeah, go ahead and read the email that, uh, that Matt sent us. But our man on the ground, Rabbi Matt Schneeweiss, he did some digging for us, didn't he, Alvin? Sure. Uh... So, yeah, so in... nice. Yeah, so in that context... That type of edit actually made no sense. But uh, just wanted to, you know, for people who are here for the first time, um, there are a lot of podcast teams that, like Alban was saying, transcribe everything first, and then they actually work on their edit in a Google Doc. And then when they get the Google Doc in a good place, um, what they would historically do is then take that with the time code of all the edits they want to make, bring that into, let's say, Audition or or or. Pro Tools, and then cut up the tape that way. And what Descript allows you to do is start basically with the transcript and kind of read through it, copy, paste, you know, put stuff in different compositions and just try out a workflow as you're here. And then as you're going, you're building up this great um, transcription. Um, I've had about, I've had two questions that have come in. This is a very active group. Thank you today, uh, everybody. Uh, it also makes it Fascinating for me to find where the comments go. Here we go. Um, can we have white glove transcriptions on our episodes when we've already done the majority of our content and edits? I haven't able to figure out how to do that yet. So let me tell you about two ways that you can do white glove. One is in the app now. One is coming. 
Um, when you add source material to the app, so um, Alban, just for fun, um, I want you to, let's say, uh, create a new composition. So on the compositions on the left. All right. There you go. That right. guy. Okay. Yep. And then add new. Cool. All right. Now say, click on choose a file. Okay. And just put any old audio. I'll put you on the spot. Any old audio file um, on your browser or on your, it doesn't matter. We're not actually going to transcribe it. We just need to trick Descript into All thinking. All right. Well, I'm going to have to go start digging around a little bit. Sure. So while Alban's pulling that up, um, many of you have noticed when you add a file, this pops up on the bottom left. Um, so many of you probably just click on, you know, detect speakers. So this is what we did for you, Alban. We clicked on detect speakers. And because we knew that this was an interview with three people in it, we clicked on that and pressed the number three. Um, you usually keep it at automatic, but do me a favor, click on the word automatic on the bottom and you'll see that you can actually either import an existing transcript. So um, if you've actually already done a transcript, um, perhaps if this is a scripted recording, like a, uh, uh, a, you know, a radio show where you're actually like acting it out, um, uh, audio books are a great example where you would just import an existing transcript um, we will bring it in for you and automatically line it up. So consider that um, when, it, when you have an existing transcript. Um, the other thing would be white glove. So do me a favor, click on the white glove. In this situation, we, ha we have a few different types of white glove. Um, in this situation, if you have an audio file and you want that This American Life workflow where you want your raw audio file and you want a basically 99% accurate transcript generated from it, you would use this step. And you would just click on transcribe. A team of human transcribers will go in and create you know, as close to 100% as they can um, within your file. All right, awesome. You can uh, right, click out of here. Account. You want me to click it? No, thank you. Uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but you can uh, go back to your other project or your other composition. Um, and so the other thing that, you know, that we have a very lucky few of you noticed that we had an option. It was under the wrench icon, very dangerously close to where Alban's uh, mouse pointer is right now. Um, that little wrench icon had something that we were testing out and it was called white glove beta. And that's probably what you are referring to pleasure central radio. Um, it was uh, something we were testing out and we're going to be bringing back very soon um, a way for people to come in and transcripts correct your final edited podcast once it's totally done. So what Alban is showing you is anybody who's on this live stream can and should transcript correct their material. And we have some, some new things that we're really excited to show you to help you make that easier in the future. But we're also working with uh, a talented staff to come in and help you get going. So, so Jay, stay tuned for that. The person that would use that would be someone like yourself who's doing the edits kind of, you're doing all the, you're cutting a lot. And so that the white glove part that they're paying for is actually going to be quite a bit shorter than if they did that at the front end. Yep. Is that correct? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's, th that's, that's why we're looking into, uh, you know, extending the white glove functionality to go in and edit your Descript session because you've already made the edits, you've trimmed it out, um, and that'd be the best way to do it. Cool. Okay, so uh, sometimes watching somebody edit material, especially edit transcripts, is, is not the most exciting thing in the world. So let's imagine this is a 100% accurate transcript. All right. Um, I would love for you to take people through the, uh, the process of, of exporting it to Buzzsprout. All right, so where do we go to, where do, we go to do our export? So uh, a couple ways, you can click on the share button in the upper right, or let's do that. Um, so now we're gonna click on publish. All right. so, so what publishing does, we have, you can see this, that, that wonderful little preview at the bottom, um, but basically we can create a web page for you which has the embedded Descript player and a transcript that follows along with the audio. 
Um, so we're going to click on publish here. All right. And what this is doing now is it's going to kick off a rendering process in the cloud. Um, so your final mix of your audio is being rendered in the cloud and it's being put at that URL. And so if, um, if you click on open browser now, we, we probably won't see it cause it's going to open up on a, you're only sharing your Descript window. Um, but if we well, I can you know, see it, so I will vouch awesome. that it's pulling up a website. <laughs> awesome. So it's pulling up a website and uh, a web page that allows people to see and hear a playable version of the file with a, tr a, a real time transcript. And it's kind of the like Descript style. So it's highlighting the words as it's going by. Perfect. Um, but there's quick share. So at the bottom, you see a look at that. It's a Buzzsprout icon. And so if I click this, yep. Um, no, I'm not sharing this part again, but what it's doing is it's pulling up. I'll actually go into StreamYard and show this. Yeah, please. Thank you. Let me go ahead and uh, get in, log into my account quickly. So what we built the quick share for is, you know, after the audio is rendered and the transcript is also published and the subtitles are generated, we have all this rich content. So let's allow people a very quick way to share this out to their, some of their favorite providers. All right, yeah, one of those will be Buzzsprout. So I'll stop sharing my screen and I will share again. And I'm just gonna share everything. All right, can you see my full screen now, Jay? There we can, including uh, several versions of us. Now we see your Gmail. There we go. All right, nice. Well, <laughs> uh, now I can go and I into Buzzsprout and it yep. pops it's open. And what we're doing is we're importing this into one of my podcasts. I have all these are all my podcasts, and so this is actually going into Buzzcast, and now it's processing. So it's really nice that we've got this kind of seamless workflow from Descript. Now that episode is up, it's in Buzzsprout, and this would be processed in about a minute, and yep. then we could publish that. Awesome. So we'd be out pretty quickly. Awesome. While we're here, do you mind clicking on the open in browser? So we can also see um, oh, yeah, you know, sure. what, so when we publish, this is kind of what it will look like. And maybe hit refresh for a second. It usually takes a few minutes to get the uh, the exact like it says, you know, audio finalizing. Final. Yep. So it's a long episode, uh, but that is a good way of sharing out. So um, if you want, you can just share your Descript window. All right. I'll just pop back just to that. All right. Um, the next thing I want to share. I mean, several several folks at the very beginning. Um, mentioned uh, creating excerpts for posts to your blog, to Facebook, to forum discussions, grab and go, repurposing content for social media. So do me a favor, Alvin. Uh, why don't you dismiss that dialogue? Okay. Okay. So the, the couple of things that we could do um, for Griff's use case of like actually sharing some of this out um, for blog posts and interesting things uh, the simplest thing you could do if you really just need the text, well, all Albin would do is actually just copy and paste the text. Uh, so if so that go, like control A, ex if you wanted to copy literally everything, then yes. Um, okay. Or if you want to, you know, just select a paragraph, you could just select the paragraph, and like you would expect to be able to do, you can just copy that and then you could paste that directly into, you know, a, a forum or a Facebook post. And now you have the transcripts there. Nice. Um, if you wanted to export it out of Descript, well, a lot of notifications going on on my side. Uh, if you wanted to export that out of Descript, uh, you could click on the share button again. And then you would say export and then text. So exporting text allows you to export out everything you're looking at on the screen, either to a Word or an RTF file. Um, you have a couple of uh, things you could do, such as, you know, do you want timestamps in there? Do you want them at paragraph breaks, speaker labels, uh, or at markers? 
Nice. So uh, this is going to be, you know, a great way where you can have your final transcript. So we have uh, some people we work with that are using, uh, let's say, WordPress uh, to power everything. Um, you can export out your doc file and then copy and paste that transcript into WordPress and then format it, you know, however you like to be part of your show notes. Perfect. That's a, a great option we have. Uh, and then uh, something else that you can do if you want to dismiss that window uh, would be creating some uh, audiogram snippets. All right. So uh, we're let's find here. absolutely. So, so you know, actually, two things we could two things we could do here. The first would be um, let's just export out just a snippet. So the first thing we want to do is find me an interesting paragraph, Alban. Okay, so let's just do this first little bit. All right. All right, so this was just kind of our, that's the little bit that we, you know, that's kind of the intro to the episode. Okay. And oh. now we're headed to share. Yep. And we'll do publish as an audiogram. Exactly. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to create an audiogram. You see that you have the selection made. So it's only going to export that as a selection. And then uh, you have a choice uh, between a couple of different templates. All right. That is pretty cool. Which one, which one works best for you? Man, I actually, this is probably my favorite. I like this okay. one a lot. All right, so now let's personalize that. Let's go down a little bit lower. Um, so you can see if you show the composition title, which I usually do as the you know the, the name of the podcast, uh, the speaker label, which is usually helpful when multiple people are going, um, the accent color, yep. Um, the accent color, maybe a, a buzz sprout green perhaps. Well, Jay, I'll admit I'm colorblind, so I'm just gonna pick a color. And That's good. And pretend it's green. That one's green. <laughs> I love that. So uh, next up will be background image. All right. Scroll down, choose the oh, file. Yes, I actually have the artwork for this podcast. All right, cool. So it's popping up a finder window that we can't see, but we will see the results of shortly. Awesome. So that's just the PNG file. Um, now we can see that this is looking good. Now the text is showing up as black on that. So we're going to maybe try tint background. That's looking a little, a little better. Um, and then I might actually drop this artwork out of here. I think I like it. It looks a little cleaner this way. Okay. Awesome. Well, everybody can see you can put artwork in there. Um, there's also dark mode, which would flip, um, which would flip the color scheme. And then the badge, the last one would be if you selected the custom badge on the bottom, if you had the buzzsprout icon handy. Oh, nice. So I actually could have just used instead of having um, where we have Descript up here, yep. if I actually put in the Buzzsprout logo, I could exactly. actually just have that. Exactly, oh, now man. it's... It... I should have grabbed it, that would have been great. Oh, all good, we'll get the Descript one in there. So um, so uh, what Alban's showing you is something that's available for all of our pro users uh, in a very kind of quick and easy way to uh, excerpt out things. So now that Alban's configured this, just for fun, click on Publish. Um, so what this is doing is this not only uh, took that snippet and it shared it as a, a link so you could share that link and you, you don't have to worry about like the video file. That link is something that is available and you can use that. So when I publish stuff on um, several channels, I'll just use that link. But also you see it's generating it locally on Alban's machine. So that way um, in you know a minute or so, an MP4 file will be downloaded locally of the audiogram. And there you go, it's on his machine. Perfect. And what's cool is just for fun, um, scroll down and let's pick another random paragraph. And then I'll show you a different way to create an audiogram rather than the share button. Uh, why don't you click out of there actually. Um, I like showing people 10 different ways to do something. Uh, hit. <laughs> Command K. Command K. What does Command K stand for? 
uh, I, I have no idea, but it's the <laughs> quick switcher with a K. And this is our way of, uh, you just type in what you want to do. So try typing in audiogram. All right. And then you can see create audiogram was the first selection. And what I wanted to really reinforce here is that uh, you've already set up how you want it to look. And we assume that if you're going to do multiple selections, those same things are there. So once you configure your artwork and your logo, those are going to stay as the way to share. Man, there's so many options here. These are great. This one looks good. Awesome. All yeah, right. I so can, um, definitely attest to the value of audiograms. Um, when you share them on social media, the numbers are about three times as many people will click the audiogram if it's if it actually has that waveform versus just being a static image so if part of your podcast promotion strategy is getting things onto social media you definitely want to take advantage of the audiogram settings um, whether you're doing that through descript or wave or headliner which i think you have a integration with or bus wherever it is uh, make sure you're creating those because they get three times as many clicks and it's a really great way to share your podcast with the world. And and speaking of uh, of sharing it with the world, um, you know we have our entire. I just want to make sure we touch on this. Uh, you have your entire transcript here. Let's imagine we've we've published it to Buzzsprout. Can you tell us a little bit about the uh, the podcast podcast index and the work you're doing there to ensure that the transcripts are actually shared out? Yeah, let me share. Um, switch my screen that I'm sharing again and I'll show you. So what we've been working on um, with Podcast Index is coming up with a way to make transcripts accessible to everybody. And what used to happen was if you created one, it was kind of locked away on your own website. And we wanted to make a open source way for everybody to share the same transcript file. And we were running into issues where Maybe you created a perfect transcript for your website, but then somebody else was transcribing it like Google or Apple for search, but they're only transcribing at maybe 80% accuracy. And so you really want one definitive, uh, perfect transcript. So what we do, um, at Buzzsprout and what the podcast index is, has formalized is there's a way for the transcript file to be shared in your RSS feed. So if you ever put a transcript onto Buzzsprout, and if you're ever using Descript to send it to Buzzsprout, we get that transcript automatically. Then that transcript is available in your feed. So we're looking at, if we take a look at this episode that we just worked on, here it is on my Buzzsprout website. Um, I've got my show notes, but then I actually have my transcript. So you have all of this readily available on the web. Um, what's really nice here is that that transcript is available to everybody. It's Google can find it and it's one home for your podcast where, um, then people could always click out to any number of, uh, podcast directories so they could listen to the podcast. But the big improvement with what the podcast index is, is that it's not now locked in here on Buzzsprout. It's available for all apps to use. So um, one of the one of the use cases that I've seen that I thought was really good was um, you know, here's a Twitter thread I wrote on this. Uh, Podcast Addict actually did where inside the app they are pulling the transcript in. I don't know if that's maybe a little small for people to see, but if you ever listen to a, a song on Apple podcast and you play, you have the um, lyrics at the same time you're listening to the song, right? That is now podcast addict has actually made that available for people listening to a podcast. And so if we go back to the original use cases for why transcripts are valuable in the first place, I mean, this is it. If English, if, English, I say English, but the language of the podcast in isn't your first language, man, is that easier to read along with the podcast. Or if you're a little hard of hearing, read along with the podcast. Yeah. It's really nice. And there's just so many ways that this can be used. 
Um, and now that it's out there and it's open source, it's available to all podcasts on, um, you know, almost all the podcast hosting companies are really getting behind this. So maybe just check with your pod, your hosting provider if you're not with Buzzsprout to make sure that they offer the ability for your transcript to be shared to all of the podcast apps. Awesome. So uh, Kristen wants a uh, clarification. Um, you know, we, we had demoed exporting from Descript to, or publishing from Descript to Buzzsprout. And then will a transcription appear somewhere in their directories? Yes. So if you ever use, Buzzsprout has lots of ways to bring transcripts in. But one of the easiest is, especially if you're using Descript, click to publish and then send your podcast to Buzzsprout. But then we get that transcript as well. The script will send that part as well. And then we are going to put that into your feed and get it into all the directories. Now, some directories don't use it. Like Apple Podcast does not use it yet. Um, but we're working, and this is part of what the Podcast Index is doing. We're working with the Podcast Index and just the industry as a whole to try to make this a standard. We think it should be available in every podcasting app and hopefully that if you put the hard work in on the front end to get that transcript right, that everybody in the whole ecosystem respects your transcript and uses that as the canonical example of what was said on the podcast. Amazing. Amazing. Um, I had, uh, I'd probably misspoken before about, uh, we were, there's a couple different links in that share window, by the way, there was, uh, the project access, there's publishing, um, there's a couple different things. So you'll notice, uh, so a project access link is what I would do if I wanted to invite someone else to join me in the project. Um, so if it's, you know, a Google Doc, think of it as that's the link that you would share to somebody else. Thank you. Um, so that, that web.descript link, that project access link, if you were to take that and, you know, we use this at Descript all the time internally, someone will pop that into a Slack window and then anybody else can click on it and start editing the project. Whereas when you go to the publish window um, and if you were to publish something out, so just hit publish really quick, just for fun, it's gonna generate that share.descript link. And that is the link to your final, your final um, creation not the okay, work so in progress. Yeah, so once this is processed, I could just share that link with anybody and they would have access to the video audiogram that we just created? Correct. Nice. Absolutely. So I wanna, uh, I wanna take us on a challenge. Um, uh, first of all, um, let's go from correct text mode back to edit audio mode. Okay, command. You remember the keyboard command? There you go. Uh, so do you know how to create a YouTube video with captions and cover art for your episode? I mean, I can guess. I mean, I imagine we're going back to share, to publish. There's no ability to do video. Okay, can I do this? Can I just do the entire episode? Like Command A and then do it this way? Oh, wait, wait, new one, Command K. No, there's nothing for YouTube. All right, okay. Okay, you're going to walk through. You're going to have to show me. All right. So um, if your episode is less than 30 minutes or you have, you know, 30 minutes that you want to share, then just what you were doing would totally work, Almond, where you just select all and then go to share and you export an audiogram, select the cover art, and you're good to go. But in this case, um, what we could also do, so say select all. Okay. And then... Uh, do me a favor. Now that you've selected all, there's this feature in Descript where if you take an image file, so in this case, I want you to find your cover art okay. and I want you to just literally drag that PNG file onto it and just let go. Okay. We got something happening. All right, cool. So um, just click back into Descript. Now go to the very beginning of the session, which you can do by uh, hitting Command K and typing zero, okay. or scrolling up. Scrolling's fine. Scrolling's fine. <laughs> um, 
Okay, so uh, looks like the the dropping the image didn't totally work. So drag it on top of the text itself. Okay. So there you drop go. And it just, like right there. Yep. Awesome. So what we've done just by doing that is now an image will appear on screen the entire time you have uh, that text. Do me a favor and um, just resize the image so that way it's not taking up the full screen. Uh, drag it up a little bit higher. There we go. And now for fun, um, do uh, select all. Okay. And then type command K. Type the word captions because I want to insert captions. Insert fancy captions. That was only the best for you, Alvin. The fanciest of captions. And then now, um, just start playing. All right. Well, if you're an avid podcast listener and you listen to everything at you know 1.5. Oh, see, this is what I'm, I'm turning this back. <laughs> the 1.7x. Getting in a clubhouse feels like the slowest thing ever. <laughs> <laughs> with, like, with silence skipping turned on and voice boost. Yeah, I was Kevin, do you actually like, listen at 1.5? 1. 1.5 right. is the minimum. This is pretty cool. I so I can just edit. Really? I usually around. listen like 1.75. I'm a 1.3 smart speed guy. I'm a locked in one. So I could actually share this to YouTube now? Yeah, absolutely. And if you clicked on the captions, for example, um, you click on the caption on there uh then there's some slight the slider on the far right next to the comments allows you to adjust you know some of the like the font choice and the colors behind the caption and things like that is that this right here exactly yep so then that would allow you to kind of choose the font and 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 do things and then then all you would do from there is export the video or publish the video and there you go now you can have uh, your episode in its full version with cover art and captions um, easily created. And you can do this for snippets as well. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty incredible. So you'd be able to make this full video, you know, pretty quickly. Absolutely. That's definitely not a feature I knew about. That is, that's why we uh, do these live streams. I'm really thrilled to have all these people join. And um, it seems like people enjoy me not demoing uh, and <laughs> having other people explore. Yeah, well, that's pretty cool. Um, so, do, so do we have any other questions before we sign off? We've had a lot of comments uh, and I think we've, we have had a number of questions that we've actually organically got to along the way. Um, that means you're a good, you're a good host. Well, I don't know about that, but uh, we're, we're always getting better. Um, you know, what is a good host? Buzzsprout, a good host for your content. Uh, everybody, we're going to end it on a, uh, slightly like cheesy note. Um, while I get to make that pun, but Alvin, seriously, thanks so much for joining us today and teaching us a little bit more about the value of transcripts, the value of, you know, having your content easily searchable and accessible and digestible and just how easy it is to get it out there into the world. Yeah. And, um, you know, if anybody has any questions or they kind of want to add their voice to the conversation, um, I'm on Twitter at Alvin Brook, just spelled the same way as my name. And we've got a big Twitter thread on Buzzsprout just about transcripts and all the work that's happening with the podcast index and how, um, you know, you can just, uh, I don't know how, how all this is developing. And so we're updating that over time. So you can just kind of stay tuned to everything that's happening with podcast transcripts. So we really think um, this is the best way to kind of help the podcast industry move forward and be more accessible for everybody. I couldn't agree more. Uh, and uh, if uh, so, definitely follow, follow Albin, um, follow Buzzsprout, and then also to join more Descript conversations and keep this conversation going, uh, join our Discord community. Uh, Discord.descript.com will be the invite link that you can follow to take you there. Um, share whatever projects you're working on or kind of get help with the projects you're doing. And uh, last up, um, if you ever need help, go to help.descript.com. Um, that's our help center. That uh, allows you to kind of search all of our articles. It looks like this. 
And if you ever have a support request that you need, just click on that button in the upper right. And then a page like this looks right at you. Type in what you need and our team will get back to you in uh, about 24 to 48 hours. Okay. Let's wrap for today. Um, Alban, thanks again for joining us. And uh, everybody, thanks for watching. Appreciate it. We'll see you next week. See everybody. Thank you. Bye now.